Hello everybody, Dave Sands with another episode of the Food Origins Podcast. Today, uh, this podcast was based on our road trip that we took through the Western States uh, with my wife and we took a van through uh, the Pacific Northwest and one of the spots that we stopped at was at Fieldcraft Survival Headquarters in Provo, Utah. I went to visit my friend Mike Glover and see the new headquarters with the training center. I've known Mike since 2017 He's also one of the instrumental people to help me uh, and give me so much support to start this podcast. And while I was there, he introduced me to Greg Lappin. Greg Lappin is their head instructor for jujitsu and tactical training. So I got to talk to, you know, short notice, got to sit down and talk to him about some of the healthy habits, eating, how to stay lean and mean. And so we had a good time talking there and I appreciate everyone at the Fieldcraft Survival, especially Mike, allowing us to use your studio. So we got to use their awesome studio that Mike talks about in uh, all his content in there. And so we borrowed their studio and sat down at a great conversation. So I appreciate everyone for their support. And I think you guys will like this one. Take care. We are rolling. Yeah. Lily pad, you better be good, chick. I got my Malinois down there, you know. That's awesome. I did I did uh I did Chad Robichaux's podcast. Okay. On Monday morning after I fought at Dallas. I, oh, drove, wow. I drove from Dallas to Houston, did his podcast. Uh it's stay dangerous, turning into resilient. They're changing the branding a little bit. Okay. And uh Lily was right there next to me, but when their sound guy, their producer came in and did like the sticks for the clapping to get yeah. everything synced up, yeah. she was like ready to go after oh, him, dude. Is that like a signal for her? No, but she wasn't ready for it, and we're all just chilling right here. She's yeah. laying right next to me, and a dude just steps in and goes whack in front of her. She's like ready to go, oh. and like everyone was laughing, dude, except for that guy. But yeah. It was pretty funny, but she's chill. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Shout out to Chad. Uh, <laughs> nice. Volunteered for his organization, Save Our Allies, him and Tim. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mighty, Mighty, Oaks, Mighty Oaks as well. Yeah, yeah. I have not d- gone through there, but yeah, I've yeah. supported them too. Been to the gala. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome dude. Awesome people. Just like salt of the earth. Yep. You know, humans. So, yep. And we cannot forget where we are today. Uh, it's pretty awesome to be able to uh, sit here with Greg Lappin. He's the head instructor at Fieldcraft Jiu Jitsu, and we are here on location in the Fieldcraft headquarters, Fieldcraft Survival headquarters. Uh, shout out to Mike Glover. We're borrowing your studio <laughs> and table, um, using my gear, and uh, sitting down with Greg to have a conversation about food Yeah, on the Food Origins podcast. And uh, so I appreciate everyone for their support, um, you know, and, and, and letting us borrow this. And here we are with Greg. And Greg, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, tell us where you're from. <clears throat> All that good stuff. Man, where am I from? All right, where do I begin? So, yeah, so Greg Lappin, um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, left a career, uh, about a 22-year career, uh, primarily with law enforcement. Uh, same thing, you know, I worked everything, started as a patrol beat cop, uh, worked for, like, a proactive, like, street crimes unit, worked plain clothes, narcotics, intelligence, you know, SWAT, all that stuff. Contracted overseas for the government, for a couple of different government organizations uh, for about eight years. Came back stateside uh, in 2017 and got back on uh, with the sheriff's office uh, at our parish in Louisiana. Everyone else in the world calls it counties, but Louisiana still calls it parishes, right? Because it's Napoleonic law still. It's crazy. But, uh, yeah, did that. was basically just a full-time SWAT guy. Uh, I was their uh, explosive breacher on the team. Uh, We had a couple other explosive breachers that I worked with and one of their senior assaulters. You know, I was the oldest crustiest grayest guy on the great gray-haired guy on the team so yeah did that until uh, a little over a year ago mike basically told me the brainchild of this place and uh twisted my arm enough to come out here and run it so i'm i guess my official title is director of self-defense uh and i yeah i, I started and run the brazilian jiu-jitsu program uh but i do a lot of their tactical training a lot of their media and stuff from with mike and for mike as well so all, a lot of the shooting courses locally cqb Uh, our personal self-defense courses, some of our off-road mobility courses, because I've done all that stuff throughout my career. You know, I've I've raced cars, I've raced motorcycles, uh, raced desert enduro, uh, all that sort of stuff. So I kind of, I'm wearing a bunch of different hats here, but it's pretty cool. Just other than that, a normal dude. And I like to eat food. 
Other than that, yeah. <laughs> other than that. Other than that, I'm a normal dude. Right? I yeah. think we all are. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and we're, we're both black belts, bro. There's nothing normal about us. Thank God. <laughs> finally. Finally. That's me. Just got it in December. Congrats, man. That's, yeah. uh, that's Thank awesome. You. Thank big, you. Big step. Yeah. It's funny. When I got my black belt, like the day I got my black belt, a buddy of mine called me up and was like, hey, do you feel like a black belt now? I was like, dude, that's like asking your 12-year-old son the morning of their birthday, hey, do you yeah. feel 13 now? Yeah. I said, but you know what? I do. Yeah. There's just something different about it. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, you, if you come from a decent lineage, like your professor's not tying a black belt around your waist until you're already a black belt. Yeah. So you might be wearing a brown belt, yeah. but he sees you as a black belt. Right. So it's like you get your black belt and it's like oh, what is this? But like you said earlier, you're starting over too because yeah. there's black belts that have been black belts for 15, 18, 20 years. Yeah, you're dropping into a shark tank. A, 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 big, huge, a big, huge shark tank. Big shark tank yeah. with some great whites, man. Yeah, I was fortunate to have my brother there, so I got to have my instructor, Mike Prudencio, and yeah. my brother, Mike, Dude, that's put, the, awesome. put the belt on, and yeah. it was a long time coming. Yeah. And uh, to have both brothers, black belts, and our mom's not with us, so she gets to see. That's right. Down, look down. Yeah. Both. Both yeah. brothers of black belts. It's now. pretty cool. I mean, it's yeah. it's a big accomplishment. And for those of you that are watching that don't know, it's like, you know, you hear about, you know, oh, I did Taekwondo and I got my black belt when I was 13. Like, no offense, it's not a real black belt. In Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you cannot even receive a black belt until you're 18 or 19, I believe. As yeah, provided, they try to do adult, yeah, right. You can't receive an adult ranking, your first adult ranking, which is blue, until the year, the calendar year of which you turn sixteen. But in order that, like my son, my son's twelve. He's a yellow belt. Yeah, he's twelve years old. He's been training since he was five, so he's been training for seven years, and not like on the off season of baseball. He doesn't play baseball. Not two days a week in between band practice, like six days a week. For seven years and so already if an adult trained like that seven years you'd be a purple maybe even a brown belt you know and but he's 12 years old and 87 pounds so he'll get his orange belt soon actually and then uh he'll get his, eventually he'll get his green belt but when he the year he's 15 to 16 he'll get his blue belt but at a blue belt when he's 15 years old and has got some muscle he'll be beating up adult black belts because he's been training for 10 years yeah which is crazy people yeah. don't recognize that no. i've rolled with some juvenile blue belts as like a brown belt and they beat the crap out of me you know <laughs> yeah. and i'm like i'm a grown man right. Right. This it's teenager beating me up it's yeah. demoralizing but it's, it's that's what makes it so amazing yeah you know so. yeah we love it enough about jujitsu we'll talk about jujitsu more i promise you yeah <laughs> he's got uh, plenty with that <laughs> And with food. So we're here to talk about food a little bit and, you know, to get right into it, you know, what'd you eat growing up and where'd you grow up? So I grew up kind of, I bounced around a bit. Um, I grew up mostly in Northern New Jersey. I was born in New York, grew up most, mostly in Northern New Jersey. Uh, my dad was a bit of a foodie. So he was always watching cooking shows and reading cooking books and experimenting and trying stuff. So as a kid, you know, like a kid, what do you want to eat when you're a kid? You want to eat like hot dogs and chicken nuggets. I never grew up on that stuff. Like not occasionally, sure, my dad's away, my mom's running the single mom life, I've got a younger brother, yeah, cool, maybe we eat hot dogs and chicken nuggets, mac and cheese. But very rarely did I eat that sort of food. Um, didn't grow up wealthy, but didn't grow up bad off either. You know, grew up in a very middle class. And then as I got older, my father started becoming more successful into a, what I would consider an upper middle class. So I never really wanted for everything, anything. We weren't on food stamps. I didn't have to eat spam. Fortunately, uh, I did eat bologna sandwiches and believe it or not, as an adult, I still love good bologna sandwiches. <laughs> like go to one of those like bougie, like cafes where they get that fat bologna, that thick, thick bologna, right? Some American cheese on oh, Texas boy. toast and mayonnaise. Yeah. I still like, I'll still eat that. Dude. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I grew up, like, my dad is a foodie, and I don't know, we ate pretty healthy, and I don't remember anything specifically that really sticks out, but, you know, we, we would eat, you know, steak, and we would eat chicken and, and vegetables, like, you know, grilled sautéed chicken with, you know, rock salt and pepper and rosemary and, you know, thyme mixed in there and yeah. butter and garlic and sauteed green beans or something like that that's, that's nice man. It's, it was pretty good yeah that's it's, a great meal it's a pretty good lifestyle so i grew up eating pretty healthy which is what i think kind of led me to 
how I eat now and how my kids eat because my kids my kids eat what we eat. Yeah. My kids eat what I eat. They don't very very rarely do they get uh, a frozen pizza cooked in the oven or chicken nuggets. It's like so we're on a pretty not a strict diet, but we eat the same thing most of the time. Yeah, and what's typically? So I am I am on a fairly strict carnivore diet. Um, my breakfast consists of ribeye steak and eggs or, uh, fatty ground beef burger patties and eggs. Mm -hmm. Usually, usually, uh, my lunch is about the same burger patties with some avocado and white rice. Uh, and then my dinner is really the same ribeye, ribeye steak and white rice. So I eat a, a, a very heavy, um, carnivore diet with a lot of fat because I've got it. I've, I kind of, when I was figuring it out, I learned that if I was getting sluggish or tired, it's because my fat content wasn't enough. So I you're will, burn, you're burning. Ca- I mean, you're burning calories constantly with all the work you're doing. Yeah. Uh, my typical day, my typical caloric output here is about 3000 calories. Yeah. So if I want to stay calorie proficient above what I burn, I got to eat 4,500 calories a day. Yeah. So I'm eating a lot, and I'm eating a lot of protein. I've got to eat the white rice. I need that carb to kind of keep me going. Um, but that's what I eat. I drink water. Um, I am guilty of energy drinks, but I do the sugar-free. I stay away from all the stuff with, with you know, the stuff that's got some bad stuff in it. So I typically focus on some of the healthier uh, sugar-free energy drinks. I do one a day. Uh, actually, one of the things that stopped me doing a lot of the energy drinks, I don't know if you've seen the Wolf 21 stuff that Mike's involved with. Yep. So yeah. I've been using the Wolf 21 stuff for a while now. They're energy chews. So I do, I, in the morning, I do the one one mushroom and one CBG energy chew yeah. uh, instead of coffee in the morning anymore. Yeah. And uh, and then in the afternoon, when I'm getting that little afternoon kind of sluggish, I do another uh, mushroom and CBG energy gummy. Nice. I haven't tried the energy gummies. I've tried the sleep gummies. Yeah, the sleep gummies are rad. Uh, I do I do the bed down. I do one bed down and one ROD repair yeah. on demand gummy at night. Okay. And it, I sleep like a baby with it. Yeah. Um, which was not always the case due to my career and all that stuff. I, I used to have trouble sleeping. I used to drink a lot. I used to drink a lot to kind of help me quote unquote, what I thought was helping me. Yeah. And, uh, I've cleaned up that up and I don't really drink anymore. And now I use the, the gummies to help me sleep, uh, plant medicine, THC gummies and stuff, or, you know, smoke to help me sleep. And it's way healthier. It's just way healthier. Awesome. Now, you know, I, I I'm looking into doing that kind of style of dieting as well. It's uh, obviously our nutrition fluctuates yeah. through our career, especially because of the eating times. I think that's what ruined it for the most part. Because we never knew when our next meal was. Yeah, for sure. Especially working in law enforcement. I mean, you got coffee. You hopefully got coffee the first out the gate. And if you miss... You, you, you don't turn call. it down. Yeah, you don't turn it down. You know, I end up carrying a tumbler that could yep. seal because I would... I, I don't know how many coffees I've thrown out the window. Yeah, going to a car call. chase. Yeah. Well, get, going to a call, hot call, yeah. first thing out the gate, and you just got that hot yeah. cup of coffee and you don't get to drink sure. it. And you're just like, here's the cash. I'm out. We got to go. Leave it. I, I yeah. can't carry it in the car. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, done. same thing. I've left you know, meals like crazy. Yeah, same and, thing. Yeah. You know, when so, I was a young cop, I packed my lunch usually. Yeah, I tried to do more of that. And then, of course, with my background, I got to cook at the station. Oh, so nice. You guys know I got to cook a lot of the holiday meals at the yeah. station or Sunday supper, yeah. stuff like that. Nice. As soon as they found out. As yeah, soon as they sure, found out. Sure. like firefighters. Like firefighters, yeah. Exactly. I mean, they kind of have to cook. They kind of all have to take yeah. turns. For us, it was like, oh, you oh, oh, you can cook. Okay, you're making all the yeah. meals then. Yeah. We'll just bring <laughs> drinks and That's it. plates. and Tell us what you want us to bring yeah, and cook it. Yeah, so yeah. it was a good time. Yeah. But, you know, I know you didn't get to that style of eating right away. It kind of took – It this took years and years and years and years of work. What – you know, what, um, kind of like, yeah, tell us, you know, like before all that you were just eating regular good old meals, yeah, right? Eating regular good old meals, but you know, same, you know, still pretty healthy dinner consisted of, excuse me, dinner consisted of chicken and a vegetable, yeah, red meat and a vegetable. Uh, when I was eating sushi, I ate a lot of sushi, which I'm super bummed about that I don't really eat anymore. Yeah. How come? Yeah, because when you get old, apparently, I've got gout now. Mm. And I figured out that sushi was one of the main kickers of my gout. Sushi and, and anything sugary, anything with high fructose, corn syrup, and sugar. So I, I don't do any sugar, and I just I don't eat fish anymore. Bummer. Which is a bummer because I a bummer. love sushi, man. Yeah, shout out to sushi. Yeah. Uh, sushi. I'm a half Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up on it. I yeah. mean, and, and like... 
been eating it all my life. Oh, dude. You know? Yeah, I love sushi. So, yeah, so, you know, I always ate pretty healthy, never drank soda, uh, never drank sugary sodas or juice or anything like that. It was just, I don't know, I didn't really like it. And then, honestly, like, my time overseas, uh, we drank water. We drank water. We had bottles of water in our gun trucks and, and bottles of water and camelbacks and stuff like that. Can't you know? We didn't have canteens. We but we had you know bottled water and, and camelbacks, and that was the only thing you could drink because it would cook in your truck in Iraq, and you'd be drinking tea water. You know, like I don't drink I don't drink cold water anymore. Like I literally don't drink don't drink ice water and stuff, because uh, I got so used to drinking hot water. Now I just I just want tap like just room temperature like. This is what, what you're used to. It's right? what I'm used to. Yeah. yeah it's what I'm yeah. used to. So yeah, you know, ate fairly healthy, but did, you know, would have sandwiches with bread and potatoes and pasta and all that stuff as well. Um, and then I started, you know, cutting the carbs out, cutting the carbs out, leaning myself out. And then a lot of the stuff with the carnivore stuff. And do you know who Sean Baker is? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Sean Baker, um, we're not personal friends, but he's good friends with a very good friend of mine, trains jujitsu under my good friend, Greg Anderson. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, so I followed Sean for a long time and, you know, have through Greg kind of heard what he's talking about. And so I went on carnivore, I went on carnivore back like COVID like a couple few years ago. And my first go didn't really work. I was real sluggish, real tired. And then I realized I wasn't eating enough fat. So I started upping my fat using organic butter, uh, avocado, avocado oil, uh, and, and just fatty red meats and uh, adding the fat. Butter in my coffee, what do they call it, bulletproof coffee? Yeah. You put the organic yeah. butter or ghee butter in your coffee yep, and stuff, man. and I was doing that. Whip it up. Yeah, and I was doing that, and then I started, it started working for me. So I've been on carnivore for, I mean, a few years now, and uh, I used to fight at lightweight, so I used to walk around at 163, 164 mm -hmm. and fight at lightweight. Now I fight at middleweight, 181. And I'm walking at like 182, 183. I diet down just a little bit to, to make weight. And, uh, but I feel way healthier. So I've added the white rice, you know, lots of fat with my meat. And, um, and don't get me wrong. Like if we're out or especially after competition days, Hey, we're going to get pizza and beer, homie. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah. I love pizza. I was waiting for that. Dude, I will crush a pizza. Yeah, especially after cutting yeah. and then competing. Yeah. The adrenaline's coming back That's right. down. Yeah. That's right. So I do, I do enjoy... I do enjoy gluttonous food still yeah, occasionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, oh, you're bringing in brownies? Roger that. I'm going to destroy a couple brownies. Yeah. I love that stuff, you yeah. know? And then, like, you competed... Have you competed in Vegas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Yeah, it's, if yeah. you go to Vegas, I mean... All right there. Have you ever been to Capo's in Vegas? Capo's, no. So it's just off the strip. It's okay. like 10 minutes off the strip. It's a old speakeasy style, like, like um, Italian, like, mob restaurant. Oh, and nice. And you walk in, and you walk in this little thing, and what looks like the door isn't the door, and then the phone rings, you pick up the phone, and then... Like a secret hatch opens up. Oh, which that's is cool! Amazing Italian food, dude. That's cool. Yeah. All right, I'll have to do that. Check it out. Yeah, check it out. So I usually go to um, when I'm there. I've been to Best Friend, which is Chef Roy Choi's place. Okay, so it's all uh, Korean infused. Oh, nice. And then, like just a bunch of his favorite stuff. Yeah. A lot of LA eats. Yeah. Yeah, and he's known for the Korean taco, and then he's okay. done he's done like grilled chicken, got yeah. steamed rice, spicy pickled yeah, ca yeah. Uh, cucumber, yeah. kimchi stuff. Yeah, it's um, over. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I go to I like Capital Grill. Mm -hmm. Your steaks there, are just yeah. sick. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's so much good food in yeah. Vegas. Is there a meat company? I, I don't want to like put anybody out, but is there a meat company you like that you use a lot of times? Yes. Yeah, so uh, actually, locally here, uh, there's a company called Wasatch Wagyu. Mm, okay. Uh, the guy, the owner's guy, name is Greg as well. He's absolutely awesome. He's an awesome human too. He actually signed two of the boys up that work for him. They're not his sons. Two teenage boys that work for him, he signed them up and paid fully for them to train jujitsu here. Oh, that's awesome. So it's pretty cool. So yeah, so uh Wasatch Wagyu, um, I get I get pretty much all my meat from him, whether it's ground beef or ribeyes, tomahawks, top sirloin, and it's I'll tell you, it's just you can taste the difference. You can see the difference. And, you know, my kids are like, this is the best steak ever. This is the best burger ever, whatever I'm, whatever I'm making with that meat. Yeah. 
And it's just, you know, especially my kids are nine and 12 and they're in that heavy developmental stage, you know, going through puberty, hitting puberty, stuff like that. And I just, I don't want them putting garbage in their bodies. I don't want them putting stuff that's got tons of hormones or preservatives and pesticides in their bodies. And if you go buy meat from the store, you're getting, all that's what you're getting. Yeah. You have to be very specific. You have to hunt it down. You got to know what you're looking at. Um, you know, some stores are really good about it and they're really upfront telling you grass fed, grass finished, right. which is kind of what you want, not <clears throat> grain finished. Right. And then, um, just just locating and a lot of times yeah if you got a local cattle farm that's the best that's, that's your you best go. bet because you can talk to them and they'll tell you everything they're doing with it you can go visit the farm take a tour and that's that you know and that's the cleanest thing you can you can get and the hard part i think even for me and a lot of people is that we're going backwards again like food, milk was milk when my dad got milk right right Right. I kept telling him that. I was like, it's it was milk when you got it. I don't know what it is now. No, for sure. I, it's completely different. Right. And I have to go hunt it down to find the pure stuff you can right. get to be healthy. And then, you know, we've got all dairy problems and, you know, lactose intolerance all over the place. Right. W- whether you are or not, and you might not even be, but you're still, you're getting, still, sick from, whatever, you're still getting sick from it. Yeah, yeah, whatever that is in that carton that you're drinking. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's the thing. I, I think for me... One of the one of the critiques that I've had for years, decades, on food, is people will just want easy, and even more so nowadays, people want easy. Yeah. So they're hungry, they pull their phone out and they order Uber Eats from whatever their favorite little chain restaurant right. is, right? Never um, had that before either. Be able I've, to get food dropped off at yeah, your I've front never, door. I've never done that. Yeah. I've literally never used yeah. it once, you know. And it's like, uh, you know, cops especially, they would go. And just go through a drive through McDonald's and get a double whatever with cheese and French fries and a soda. I would run into Whole Foods and I'd have go to the deli and I'd have them cut me some roast beef and I'd go buy a block of cheese or I'd go get a, a rotisserie chicken and buy a block of organic, uh, organic cheese. And that's what I would eat. Yeah. Rotisserie chicken sit, sitting in my car or whatever. Rotisserie chicken, big bite of cheese, bottle of water. Yeah. The amount of time it took me to park, go in there, buy it, and come out was the same amount of time it took them to sit in the drive through lane, right? And we're probably spending nowadays about the same amount of money. Yeah. But it's lazy. Yeah. You know, so people, I think, does it take more work to find a local, local, uh, you know, local cattle guy, local, local uh, meat guy? Yeah, it does. Than going into Walmart or whatever and buying meat, it does. But what you're getting, it's just, what do you want out of life? What do you want for your kids? So for me... I'm still an athlete, I'm 45, and I'm still an athlete, so it's even more important nowadays that I take care of my body with what I put in it. I take care of my body with, you know, aftercare and, and physical therapy and all that stuff that when we were young, we didn't really care about. Yeah. It was like, yeah. Recovery. Uh, yeah, recovery. recovery. What? Let's go Gator, drink beer. Gatorade. And yeah, exactly. Gatorade. And, and, and French fries. Yeah, exactly. And then we're drinking beer at night, and, you know, it's like, dude, rinse and repeat, so. Yeah. Yeah, so... On that on that note, yeah, just you know, do your research and you'll know what you're getting. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of other guys putting good content out, showing you how to how to find it and how to make it. And I cook a lot of stuff at home, and yeah. that 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 saves you. It does save you a lot of money. Saves you a ton. You know, of you money. may be buying a lot up front, like oh, you bought you know a whole stat whole meat box. Right. Costs you you know three hundred bucks, but and you're a meat is. forever. That's right. And then if you're going to the store, you're buying it retail one pound. So, yeah, it, you know, it goes out long term. Yeah. And then same thing, like I eat at home. I cook. I, I don't yeah. go out to restaurants very often. You know, we have guests in town or whatever. People come in town. Hey, let's go. Let's go to this place. And But what do I eat at the place? I eat a steak. Yeah. I eat a steak and a veggie or a steak and just a steak. And, you know, yeah, then I'll have a whiskey with them. Yeah. Of course, you know. <laughs> you have a particular one? Uh, I'm, I, I've got a palate like a hobo. So I just drink with Jameson. Okay. I just like Jameson. I, there you go. I, I do appreciate nice whiskeys. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I just drink Jameson. Simple. Yeah, simple. And, uh, you know, lo- speaking of local spots, are there any spots that, y- you know, uh, that you like? Honestly, I've been pretty disappointed with the food since I moved to Utah. I've been Uh-oh. pretty, pretty yeah. disappointed. Okay. Um, just as far as, like, local restaurants, there's a lot of chain restaurants. Yeah. But I've yet to really find, like, a local family-owned, like, good little food restaurant. There's a place called Strap Tank Brewery. 
down the road, which has is great food, great atmosphere. Uh, they've got steak. They've got they've got everything. They've got bison burgers and all that stuff. But they've got good good quality food. Um, but I have not found like a standout like that's my joint. That's my place. Okay, it's my kitchen right now. They got a steak. You're there. If they've got a steak, I'm happy. Yeah, okay, I'm happy. Cool. A steak. And if there's a burger, cool. I'll get a burger. I usually get it in a lettuce wrap. I know that's so you know, <laughs> but yeah, but usually get it in a lettuce wrap. You know, if you want to lean out and you're cutting weight for a competition, I'll, no one's gonna. No, hey, is this might good. this might be vain to say, but I like yeah. having a six pack at yeah. 45 years old. Still, well, I saw Sean know. Baker ordered six flying Dutchmans. Yeah, he just posted that the other day. Yeah. Six flying yeah. Dutchmans. I mean, that's all he eats is yeah. meat. That's so. it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So cool. Yep, pretty much. And then with with food and like you know eating in different places, let's get into some of the travels because you've kind of been all over the place. Craig's Greg's kind of bounced around. Yeah. Pretty much all over. Yeah. Um, you know. Wherever you want to start, either overseas here, Louisiana. So you got you know, a lot of cool places. Yeah. To talk so about. obviously Louisiana food. Everyone's like, "Oh my God, Louisiana food um, is amazing." But yeah, sure. Louisiana food tastes good. It's not amazing. There's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason Louisiana leads the country just about in like overweight, obese people. Right. Um, the food's delicious, but if you eat that every day, all day, you're going to be unhealthy. Uh, I recently just went back for a promotion ceremony to promote a bunch of students at my, my other academy in Louisiana, and I took two of the guys from here that are from this area. And so, of course, I took them to some Louisiana places. We ate boudin. You know, boudin is like, um, it's, a, it's a sausage and rice sausage, basically. And you get boudin balls, so they ball it up and they fry it. You know, it's like a, you eat it with a, like a romulade sauce or something like that, mm. which is good. Uh, they had they got redfish um, with a burp blanc sauce. And like we got alligator. Like I, I toured them around through everything. Yeah. But honestly, when I lived there, I never ate any of that stuff. I never ate any of that stuff. Like, yes, every once in a while, crawfish boil, cool. We go to crawfish boil. Someone would make uh, gumbo, cool. I'll make some. I'll eat some gumbo. But I eat the same that I eat now. Yeah. Um, but like eating overseas, uh, I was in Haiti for about six, seven months, uh, living in Haiti, in Port-au-Prince, working for the government there. And we had a big house with a big kitchen. So we would locally source all our food. And it was actually really good because you go down a little market and you like literally get the chickens right there and slaughter them and you get everything right there. And it's like, you know, kind of where it's coming from. You're not going to really to a grocery store and buying this stuff. Um, you know, we slaughtered a goat. You know, and ate goat, you know. Um, so we ate pretty good there. Yeah. But then uh, in Iraq, my first deployment to Iraq, we were living on the embassy compound. So we had a big DFAC, the big dining facility. And uh, our joke was that first pump, because we were getting rocketed every day, twice a day, going out on runs in Sadr City and Route Irish. And, like, every day dudes were getting blown up or contact and ambushed and stuff. So it's like... Every day we're like, okay, cool, boys. This might be our last day. Let's roll. So our the ongoing joke with our team was every single meal for that deployment, we ate ice cream. Oh. So breakfast, make sure you had breakfast it. lunch, dinner, mid midnight rations, mid rats, right? Wow. We were getting ice cream with it. And they had all Ben and Jerry's ice cream or Hagen dazs Like, it was good ice cream, too. Yeah. They took care of us. Yeah. So, yeah. So the DFAC always had, like, decent food, but it was American-style food. You know, they had prime rib night, that lobster night. But we were eating ice cream oh, every single okay. meal just just because it was a joke, you know, yeah. but like, we were also like working hard, yeah. you know, training hard, yeah. working out hard, carrying tons of gear, carrying, carrying tons of gear and had tons of heat. So we're burning all that stuff off. And, and we were young. This was, I'm talking, I mean, this was over 10 years ago. Yeah. You know, I was in my early thirties. Yeah. Uh, it's, it seems like a kid. Um, MREs. MREs, yeah, yeah. Spent <laughs> spent a good amount of time eating MREs, figuring out which ones I liked, which ones I didn't. The yeah. chip tam's pretty horrible. Don't get the chip tam. I, I don't saw, even know what they make uh, now. Shout out to Andy Stump and Sean Rogers. They did that pairing thing. Did you ever see them do that? I didn't see it was them. Wine and MREs. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's would, pretty cool. And they they were doing foreign uh, uh, military as well. Okay. MREs. Oh, that's and, cool. And some they just. Didn't even want to try, yeah, and then I'm trying that. Yeah, yeah. Sean was eating more of it, and <laughs> I 
I yeah. can't imagine. Like, yeah, I've eaten my fair share of MREs. Um, but it's calories, you know. But it's calories, and that's yeah, it. You know, that's all you need. And then if, if if you're in an environment, operational environment, where you don't have a defect, where you don't have that sort of support, yeah. what else are you going to do? Yeah. Um, I spent a good amount of time kind of like embedded with some local populace. Mm-hmm. And when I did that, I had to eat what they ate, Yeah. which was not pretty disgusting, really disgusting. But what are you going to do? Like, you're hungry. You know, you've got to eat. So, uh, And out of respect for them. Out of, out of respect, absolutely, for sure. You know, so I, I did my fair share of shuras where you're sitting around with, you know, village elders or the elders. And, and you know, and uh, they would bring out these big platters, these big metal platters. And on it would just be the entire carcass of a baby goat. Eyeballs and everything still just, just they put it on a spit, they cook it, and they drop it on the sink. So it's the entire carcass, head, eyes, everything. everything. And then just rice and, like, rice and diced up veggies all around it piled on, and they just set it down on there. So all the juices drop down into the rice and all that stuff. And um, they'd bring out some bread or, or not, I can't even, parada bread was like the Indian bread and the naan and all that stuff. So they'd bring flat, bread. Some sort of flat, flat bread. Flat bread. Yeah. And uh, you'd sit on the floor around it. And you don't eat with your right hand, right? Um, no, I'm sorry. You don't eat with your left hand, right? Because your left hand is what you use to wipe your ass with. You shake shake hands and yeah. stuff with your right hand. Okay. So you literally tuck your left hand behind you or you'd sit on it and then everyone would eat Just with so their hands. Just so you don't forget. Yeah, yeah, everyone would eat with their, their hands. Um, that's pretty disgusting. I don't eat I don't eat goat anymore. I don't eat lamb anymore. I, I can't stand the taste of any of that. I'm just Was it just too gamey? Too gamey. I, and I just did it for so many years and you'd eat it'd just be the gamiest, oiliest, just nastiest yeah. meat, you know? Okay. Um and so yeah, I did that. Uh I was in Egypt, uh I'm sorry, this was India. I was in India for a while and um they brought out some local cuisine and they brought out uh, lamb masala, which was lamb brain. And they brought it out in this platter and it looked like a platter of like wet bread pudding, if you will. It was disgusting. I mean, like, I'm, think, <laughs> I'm thinking about it now, but it's like, like, again, what are you going to do? You're going to offend your locals that you need. You're going to offend your locals that like could potentially like save your life, yeah. you know, or keep you yeah. out of trouble. Yeah. So you, you suck it up and you eat it. You, yeah. you do what you got to do. Um, even if you just ate too. Even if you just ate, yeah, you suck it up and you go, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. So I've I've experienced some pretty nasty food. Uh, I've experienced some really good food. I spent some time in Thailand. I love Thai uh, food. Absolutely love Thai yeah. food. Um, you have some favorites some, there. Um, yeah. So there's a there's a dish called pad siu gai. Pad siu is a big flat. Uh, noodle. Big flat the noodle. Yeah, yeah, big flat, thick kind of noodle, mm-hmm. and gai is chicken. And uh, it's got a little bit of basil in it and some of their Thai chili and stuff and uh, some veggies, you know, uh, carrots and, and broccoli and stuff in there, onion. But the noodle's amazing. And then you got to order it. When you order it, you got to ask for prikna. Prikna pla is the, uh, the fish oil chili sauce. Yeah. And it's hella spicy. And you, if you smell it, you're like, oh, I'm not putting that on my food. <laughs> it's got a really strong smell to it. Yeah. But you take it in a little spoon and you dish it out over your over your food and you mix it all up. And it's it's like, uh, dude, that's like that's the Thai thing, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I love Thai food. Uh, super inexpensive too. Super cheap. You can live over in Thailand like a king, you know. Um, spent time all through Europe. Spent time in Italy, love Italian food, loved Italy. What's your ethnic background? Uh, I am German, Portuguese, and French. There you go. Yes, yeah, so yeah. my mom's side's like all German. Last name is Mueller, you know? Yeah. Uh, so all German, my dad's side's Portuguese and French. Yeah. Lapin is my last name, means rabbit in French, so. All right. Yeah. Have you had rabbit? I've had rabbit, yeah, yeah. I have eaten rabbit. I've eaten squirrel. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Eating squirrel. We we uh we ate and hunt squirrel in Louisiana. Uh, we were out camping and stuff. So yeah, eating rabbit, eating squirrel. I like rabbit actually. Rabbit's pretty good. Rabbit's not bad. I've never had squirrel. Yeah. What's it? What squirrel tastes like? Squirrels. That's eh, nothing to write home about. It's like a gamey little dark meat. It's not bad. Okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think of like lamb brain's probably the number one like weirdest thing. Most weirdest ever. thing. Yeah, yeah, that's the weirdest okay. thing I've ever yeah. eaten. Probably maybe your f- most favorite meal you've had like you if you could go back to that place you'd be like oh my god i, I need to you know all right 
best meal I think I've ever had. This is the one that probably like holds out in my head is in a town called Luca in Italy. Luca's an old, old uh, fort town, right? So it's surrounded by this massive wall. And uh, we went to this Italian place there and got gnocchi and like some other Italian dish. And literally every meal, the salad, the everything was just like perfect it was amazing so but again if you could say hey you're 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 getting executed tonight last meal just give me a ribeye heavy rock salt a lot of butter some garlic sear it really really hard on like a cast iron that's what i want just the steak i don't want anything else yeah and a glass of whiskey i'll be happy then you can put me out of my misery perfect (laughs) perfect uh some fun questions uh if you well i I think we're on the steak thing but if there was another recipe somebody a dish somebody should try what would it be basic dish or like a like a crazy dish but you could do one of each so i'm a sucker for chicken parmesan Mm. Uh, my tie chicken parmesan chicken marsala a good chicken marsala Oh, I'm a sucker for and a good chicken parmesan. I'm absolutely a sucker for. Don't eat it a lot, you know, yeah. for, for obvious reasons. I don't eat it a lot. But if I'm at an Italian restaurant, I'm probably getting chicken parmesan or chicken marsala. And then favorite dessert still from childhood. And you, you'll appreciate this as a chef. So uh, obviously French background, Lapins, my last name. There is a dessert that my pop used to make when I was a kid called Tarte Tin. Have you heard of this? You know what yeah, it is? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like... It's a, a it's a crust doughy kind of pie with apples with that's got this caramelized stuff on it. It's and you eat it with vanilla ice cream. Mm. So tart de tan, that's that's the dessert right there. Yeah, it's like an apple apple tart. Basically. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a flourless apple tart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's rad. So awesome. yeah, chicken parmesan, chicken marsala. I don't know. Yeah, you, you, I'm good with steak every day though. Yeah. No, I mean I I think it's cool. You like span the world with all the different things you've had and yeah. and it's super cool yeah i've eaten you know i've eaten food in japan i've eaten food in malaysia oh, i just got back from japan oh did you yeah we're uh way behind yeah oh yeah dude way yeah. behind did the sushi the sushi trains that just roll out yeah we did the revolving sushi <laughs> yeah. um you know i was a little skeptical my brother knows this but i was like is it gonna be good are they just trying to get us and he's like no 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 it's pumped out fresh yeah like, whack, whack, whack. yeah well it's pumped out fresh um and just it's very efficient the other thing is cool is there's a hot tea sp- faucet so if you want tea you just hit your cup it's right hot there. water yeah. and then you just add tea to it and it's right there the green yeah. tea um the food there was just yeah. i mean everything was phenomenal yeah, yeah and so. you have like pockets of just somebody that's just been making one item this whole restaurant makes tonkatsu yeah pork oh, tonkatsu, tonkatsu dude or chicken tonkatsu Bro, right tonkatsu is like one of my favorite japanese japanese dishes yeah uh katsu don yeah, the bowl with yep. the oh, egg right. and the seaweed over. Oh yeah. my god, dude, that's one of my with the with the sauce with yeah. their their that like plum sauce that katsu sauce they yeah. have. So we oh, went to is. a few places. So I'll tell you a couple of places about katsu. But like, we had gyu katsu beef. Oh, okay. You'll love it because do they fry it? Like, yeah, it's still fried okay. in the batter, but they fry it rare. Okay. So when you get it, it's rare. You have your rice soup sauces on the side. Yeah. And they give you a little bit of wasabi, too, if you want some wasabi. And then they give you a hot iron to sear it to finish it. Uh-huh. So you can finish it however you want. So if you want it well, you can, what, yeah. you know, whatever. Better ruin really, it. Don't, don't eat steak well. <laughs> yeah. If you want to ruin it, yeah. you know, but you get to finish it yourself. So then, yeah. and then it's, it's oh, dude. and then it's all. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So if you've never had gyu katsu, okay. that's. All right. I need to work on that one too. I want to make that at home and, and right. work on it. There yeah. Bring it back. Yeah, but, yeah. So gyu katsu is really good. Um, obviously the Japanese wagyu there yeah. is, yeah. is insane. insane. Um, I went to Tsukiji market and like, there's a guy just doing wagyu uh, sushi. Dog, dude. So he yeah. was just searing the wagyu over. Over a little nigiri, a yeah. little bit of rice. Yeah. Nice. You know, super good. And then, um, yeah, we we're talking about tonkatsu, super good. Oh, and you're talking about egg, chicken, and rice. Yeah. So there's a hundred plus year old restaurant there. Um, I'm drawing a blank on where it is for some odd reason, but it's Tamahide. And Tamahide's, I think they're on their fifth generation of who's cooking there, okay. family wise. And all they do is the oyakudon. Oyakudon oh, yeah, is yeah. egg, chicken. They have their own sauce, the way they make their own broth for the, the way they cook it. So it's, yeah. the chicken gets cooked in that 
uh, sauce, and then they add the egg, and then the egg is like a soft, yep. basically scramble, yep. and then they just the water. They yeah, just, just drop it that. over the rice. So we went and had that. Dude, I'm starving now too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always tell everyone when they listen to this podcast, you better not be hungry. Oh, dude, so I had better not have morning. eat. Yeah. So here's here. I haven't even eaten yet. Oh, you haven't? Yeah. Uh, I, I make a rad breakfast. So if I'm not doing steak, yeah. if I'm not doing steak, yeah. uh, steak and uh, eggs for breakfast, uh, I make a dish called migas. Okay. So migas is use chorizo, spicy chorizo. Uh, you know, cook it up in a saute pan. Scramble a bunch of eggs in there. Scramble it all together. So all the chorizo and eggs mix. Uh, some shredded cheese, whatever cheese you like. You, you know, I use sharp, like a sharp cheddar cheese. Um, and then you take corn tortilla chips and you crunch them up in there. Mix it all together. So the corn tortilla chips start absorbing some of the some of the liquid and get just they're crispy on the inside still but they're just a little like doughy soggy on the outside yeah and it gives it texture just a little bit of avocado on it and then some salsa and sour cream like your own version like chile yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah it's called miga so i made that so that's what i had this morning for breakfast okay but i haven't had lunch yet so we're talking about tonkatsu and i'm like oh yeah dude i have steak in the van we can make a steak <laughs> there after just, this. there's a black there's a black stone right out there dude uh, out by I, the art my, i got dude. my cast iron oh there you go so, <laughs> shout out to my friend who's lent us his storyteller and I was like, what's the easiest thing to make in the van with the, is there's an induction top that just plugs in. Okay. Nice. And so cast iron works perfectly on induction yeah. cause it's real metal. Yeah. And so we just been cooking nice. meat in there. It's, so it's, that's it. That's picked it. up it's some Pete Montee's skirt yeah. steak. So there's nice. skirt steak in there. Yeah. Sorry, Mike, you're going to miss out if I make <laughs> this after this podcast, <laughs> but yeah. So like, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And then I think the, I have just a few other like fun questions, but like gear, I know obviously, with all our background of everything, I think with all the, our careers, there's a lot of gear involved. But yes. food wise, is there anything like every day you're like, man, this tool's great? And be spe- kind of specific, like, you know, if someone wanted it for a cooking? Yeah, for cooking or one, I, I think you kind of said it, but cowboy cast iron is like, I cook just about everything on my cowboy cast iron. Like yeah. that's the way. Make sure you keep it seasoned, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I, I cook everything on the cast iron. Um, I'm a, I'm kind of a bougie knife guy, kitchen knives. Okay. So I have like my my kitchen knives are a full global set. I use global. Yeah. Global Globals are very knives. nice. Yeah. Surgical steel. So, yeah. So I use global kitchen knives. Like that for me, having a knife and having a real diamond steel to keep them keep them sharp and stuff is a big thing for cooking. Um, as far as cooking gear, man, I don't know. Like, but you there's also other gear. So like maybe there's. You know, obviously with everything you're doing, is there like an everyday, it doesn't have to be, you know, pew pew related, but like, is there an everyday gear that you're like, man, this, this like saves me like every day, kind of. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when we talk about everyday care, I actually showed the other day, there's a, and obviously I don't have my, I don't have my fanny pack with me right now, it's, it's, <laughs> but um, it's all good. there's a, there's a flashlight that I, I carry with me pretty much all the time every day. It's, and it's from Surefire. It's the stiletto. Mm and it's flat it looks super weird you look at it and be like oh i don't want that thing dude it's the best light ever it sits flat in your pocket sits flat in a fanny pack it's got multiple bush push buttons so you can hit it from the back you can hit it from the front variable power and it's rechargeable awesome light awesome flashlight so i usually carry that with me uh you know i'm, I'm pretty simple i uh when i do my edc dump i carry a wallet I don't have to carry two wallets anymore. I used to carry two wallets. I always had I always had a government wallet and then my personal wallet. So I always carried two wallets yeah. and I didn't in, intermingle the two. Yeah. Um, but I don't carry money in my wallet. I have a money clip. So I use a magnetic money clip to my uh, for all my cash. So money clip, instead of putting money in your wallet, you lose one, you still have the other. Yeah. I always travel with cash on me. Uh, one, of my, one of my team leaders uh, always once told me, and I, I've never forgotten this, but he said, always carry enough cash on you so you can buy a gun on the black market hmm. right and he was being a little facetious a little yeah, bit yeah. but for real as well where we were traveling where we work and how we were working if you got stranded somewhere you need to have enough cash to buy some sort of safety security a ride a vehicle a gun buy your way out buy your way out so i always have i always carry don't try to rob me <laughs> well pretty bad motherfucker yeah good luck with that good luck with that um but I always carry a few hundred dollars cash on me. I, I feel naked without it. 
yeah. you know, and I don't spend it on anything but for emergency sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so I always have cash on me. I always have Lily Pad with me. Yeah. You know, she's she's enough security for me, too. For sure. And, uh, yeah, you know, obviously the old the old iPhone. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if I, I'm not I'm not a real gear guy. I used to be. I yeah. used to be a, like the full on gear queer, like sure. everything, the newest, the yeah. baddest, this little widget, that little widget. But I think it's like quality over quantity. First, oh, 100 percent right. is quality over quantity. Like because some guys wouldn't even want to buy a couple hundred dollar pair of boots. And I'm like, you get allowance. And if you you you're in those boots more than your your personal shoes. Oh, for sure. Well, you it's know? that. And it's like, you know, like I'll use Arc'teryx as an example. Mm-hmm. Arc'teryx. Absolutely phenomenal gear. Super expensive jackets. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna spend you're gonna spend seven, eight hundred dollars on a jacket. Yeah. My last Arcteryx jacket lasted me fifteen years. Yeah. So what's seven hundred dollars over fifteen years where you're not now buying a jacket every two years? Yeah. You know, I bought a cheaper jacket that was like a hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. And literally two seasons, it wasn't waterproof anymore, and I had to get a new one. Yeah. So it's like, well, really, you know, again, buy once, cry once yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely I, I'm, I'm definitely a function over fashion guy. Um, I was, in my younger days, was super, had to have all the newest little widgets. Brands, and brand, yeah. yeah, all that stuff. I, I, I blend the model of, because there's a, definitely the guys like, oh, this worked for me back in Nam, so I don't need that fancy red dot thing, right? Yeah. There's, there's a balance, right? Yeah. There's a balance. I want to know what the new stuff is, but then tell me why it's really worth it. Prove yeah. it to me, right? Yeah. Okay, that's really a value yeah. add. Um, you know, and, and so, like, as a perfect example, so uh, you, have you heard of Unity Tactical? Yes. So Unity Tactical is actually buddies of mine. They're out of Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Um, they're buddies of mine. Uh, I helped with some of the some of the testing, some of the development with some of their stuff. But they're they're geniuses. Like they've built the best stuff. And they came out with their new Axon switch. It's a it's a pressure switch for lights and lasers. It, well, a pressure switch is a pressure switch. Uh uh-uh. This thing is a game changer to have on your rifle. Mm-hmm. To be able to where you can run your C clamp grip and have both buttons for light and laser literally like that far apart from your thumb, the angle of it, the, the tactile pressure of the switches, yeah. it is like a game changer when it comes to pressure switches for lights and lasers on a rifle. Yeah. And you wouldn't think that much of about it. You know, yeah. ah, pressure. I'll, I'll use my old pressure pad, pressure switch, tail cap, whatever. This thing is a game changer. So little stuff like that, that's like, okay, that's a value add. That's worth getting a new little yeah. piece of kit, new yeah. little piece of gear. So Well, I mean the the chef knives too. We've gotten a lot of guys now forging knives. Mm-hmm. So they're spending, you know, fifty hours on a knife, right? One guy is yeah. doing it. Like I love Neil like I don't own one of his knives yet, but Neil Kamimura okay. out of Hawaii. Um I mean he's gonna spend all week, a whole week. Do you know what island he's on? Kona, I believe. Okay. Yeah. I'm going, I might be, I think I'm going to Oahu in June. Okay. So he should probably come to Oahu to the field craft course that I'm teaching. <laughs> yeah. You know, if he happens to bring a knife, cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His sells out in like three seconds. Yeah. Maybe not even that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's so good. Um, there's a bunch, a bunch of forders, you know, like, uh, love. I have a lot of, I have two of Andy's blades from Half Ace Blades, yeah, Andy nice. Arbitos. Yep. yep. Um, those are quality. They make awesome knives. Yeah. And I, I, I'm on the list to get a custom chef set eventually. Oh, awesome. Um, so, so that's a full line. Yeah. So then when you have those quality blades, Dudes. because I was, you know, like I just have like the Disaster Junior, which is a bushcraft blade or everything blade yeah. every day, whatever. It'll cut, you know, kindling. It'll cut through a wall. Yeah. Um, and then you take that and bring it to a, he's got a chef knife, a cleaver, paring knife. Uh, I want him to make a brisket slicer. Yeah. Uh, for barbecue and stuff, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you know, and then of course he's got a whole slew of other well, stuff. But it's like, it's a tool. It's a tool, you know, and it makes such a difference when you have yeah. quality tools. There's a reason, you yeah. know. There's a reason we didn't carry high points as law enforcement officers, right? You know, we carried yeah. high end quality firearms because yeah. it was a tool. Well, same thing. I mean, especially being a chef, like you're not going to go to Walmart and buy the little, you know, Cuisinart yeah. cook set off the shelf. Yeah. Like that is a tool, and. People that do cook and that do cut and do actually cook, I mean, you'll know the difference between a good knife set and a bad knife yeah. set. Yeah, you know? and that's on the high end side. There are there are knives that you can get for twenty bucks that'll last you forever too. Dexter, but okay. those also are throwaway. Like if it breaks, yeah, you just throw. You it away can beat the crap out of it, and then 
you just buy another one. Right. Yeah. So I've had, you know, guys on that uh, run seafood companies. They use Dexter knives and they're all around 25 bucks. Yeah. A slicer, whatever they need, even if, you know, cleaning the fish. But they're like, if it breaks, I got another one in the drawer. Yeah. But I can tear it up. If you bring your call yeah. your four hand forged knife to the shop, you're not going to want to beat it up. Throw it away. Yeah. yeah. So there's like a, a line a in between. Yeah. yeah. So you balance it out with some more affordable stuff. And there are some, and I, I just actually, I never did a solo podcast till this last podcast before I did this road trip. And I did my favorite tent, like a few of my favorite things. And one of them was, you know, just like different knives. And so I brought the, there's a Miyabi a company called Miyabi. Uh, they have a, it's out of Japan, but it, their knives are about 160 bucks, and I've a friend gave it to me uh, a couple of years ago. And I've been using it almost every day in the kitchen, and I still haven't had to get it professionally sharpened. Nice. Just on the steel, real quick. Yeah, yeah. But it's. I was like, man. Yeah, for, good diamond steel, and then knowing how just to, good quality, how to knowing how to sharpen your knife on a good yeah. diamond steel. Yeah, was but that was affordable, and it's not. You know, it's not yeah. not crazy. Yeah. I mean, if, if you like knives, if you're a knife guy, these aren't kit. These aren't cooking knives. But if you like knives, there's a company called STA Blades. Okay. STA uh, out of Texas. It's a buddy of mine. He makes them, hand forges them and stuff and makes them in his garage. Oh, man. And he makes some awesome, awesome knives. Yeah. And just so you know, I put all this stuff in the notes. So there'll be like all the companies yeah. uh, when this podcast comes out later. Uh, I'll have everything in the notes. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. But Greg, I appreciate you being on. Yeah. Um, thanks, man. This was really fun. It was kind of an off the cuff, last yeah. minute deal. Yeah. We're, I'm, I'm teaching jujitsu and he yeah. comes in and I'm like, he hands me a stick. I'm like, oh, you got a podcast? I'll, do you want to do a podcast? He's like, yeah. heck yeah. I'm like, I'm done in 10 minutes. Let's yeah. go. So Let's I was just in my gi. And- yeah. Um, but before we close out, the floor is yours. Say whatever you want to, you know, give advice, whatever whatever you want to say yeah it's all you um life is hard life is harder if you're stupid you know it's like but no to say that like be deliberate about what you do with your life and be deliberate about what you put in your body uh choose your heart that's that's something that me and my buddies kind of say is choose your heart being out of shape being overweight being unhealthy is hard right it can be hard like you going upstairs tying your shoes whatever that can be hard if you're really out of shape and overweight being in shape eating healthy, working out is hard too, but just choose your heart. So, you know, be deliberate about how you live your life and, uh, you know, be, be, be careful of what you put in your body and like be healthy. I don't know. Let's make, let's all make this world a better place on that story real quick. I'll I'll close this out. So this was kind of cool. And I wish I had, I got to find the guy's name, but I had posted something, uh, on my social media, on my Mm -hmm. Instagram and, uh, I remember what it was. It was my rifle broken down. Okay. And my firing pin retainer pin, right? That little cotter pin that retains your firing pin. But did you ask everybody? Were you the one that asked everyone what's wrong? Yeah, yeah. I said, what's wrong with this photo, right? And got a ton of comments. And one guy who I happen to know who he is, and he's not, doesn't come from our background, doesn't really know any better. He asked a question. And a guy chimed in on the question, but it was like really like, it was kind of arrogant and like beating the dude down. So I private messaged the dude. I said, hey, brother, I said, not everyone on this platform or that follows me or comments has the same amount of experience and training that you or I have. I said, have you go back and read your comment, dude? Like, let's make this place. Let's let's make this place a better place, bro. Kudos to that mofo, because he went back and he even typed publicly in the thing an apology to the guy. Said, hey, dude, I'm really sorry. Didn't realize how my comment came off. Didn't mean it like that. And, like, then explained it, like, and I, I wrote him back. I was like, bro, good on you, dude. Like, yeah. if I ever see you, I'm going to give you a hug. Yeah. Because you didn't have to do that. Right. Right? You could have told me, oh, man, you're a jerk or something. Like, you could have been. But there's too many of these, like, people that got used to talking to people through social media now. With no repercussions. With no repercussions. And this dude did an awesome job. And he went, like, he didn't have to write a public apology or anything. So kudos to you, man. Yep. I can't remember your name on Instagram. I apologize. But, like, let's just make this world a better place. Let's be nicer to people. Being tough is way overrated. <laughs> acting acting tough is way overrated. Yeah. You can be tough and not act tough. You know, just be nice. Yeah. So that's, that all, that's all I got. Thanks, Thank bro. You. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Appreciate his support. Oh. Woo. There we go. There we go. <laughs> it didn't get on your board. Party foul. <laughs> all right, everybody. We're out. See you.
And as a quick reminder, the restaurants and gear talked about on each episode can be found on my website, foodoriginspodcast.com. I appreciate your support and thanks for listening.